Yeah, we are putting a man center stage. You definitely want to know about this. John Hope Bryan has a list of accomplishments and titles that can fill a book, but it was one tragic event in the early 1990s that rocked his community and forever changed the arc of his career. One day you might find this thrill seeker blazing around a race car track, and the next he might be sitting in the Oval Office. Del Waters introduces us to the intriguing head of Operation Hope, John Hope Bryant. You're gonna repeat after me. I can change the world. I will be the change in the world. You guys sound really weak. <laughs> Despite facing some resistance, John Hope Bryant really is trying to change the world. Talk like you got passion in your life. Talk, oh my God. <laughs> Remember now, you're honorary black people, you gotta have some soul. Speaker, author, influencer, entrepreneur, philanthropist. Bryant wears many hats and some helmets too. Bryant embodies action and success, but the 55-year-old millionaire came from less than modest means. Compton, California, South Central LA. He always had a brain for business, even making $300 a week selling candy in grammar school. But by 18, he was homeless and living out of his car. Yet eight years later, his world and life's work changed forever. At least 60 dead, 2,000 injured, 3,000 buildings burned, a billion dollars in damage. The beating of Rodney King ignited the 1992 LA riots, but also sparked a young activist into action. To rebuild the neighborhoods, Bryant knew his community needed tangible tools for owning homes, managing money, raising credit scores, and starting small businesses. He believed the best way to restore dignity was through financial literacy. It's not like poor people and struggling families got the memo on free enterprise and capitalism and screwed it up. They never got the memo. If you're middle class today, you're living in the the Bay Area, you make $50,000 a year or less, you are struggling to make ends meet. You're living in New York City, you're making $70,000 a year, you are struggling to make ends meet. So whether you're white, black, red, brown, or yellow, you want to see some more green. You deal with class, you get race for free. It's not about race anymore, it's about economics and class and opportunity. We're all in this mess together. It's about economic empowerment, he says, and giving a hand up, not a hand out. And so began Operation Hope. From my mother, I got this quote, there's a difference between being broke and being poor. Being broke is economic, but being poor is a disabling frame of mind and a depressed condition of your spirit, and you must vow never, ever, ever to be poor again. As the nonprofit's founder, chairman, and CEO, Bryant spent the last three decades providing critical training, coaching, and financing to low and moderate income families. He's been an advisor to three past presidents and built more than 40 organizations and companies that stress silver rights, nearly as much as civil rights. 
You're going to spark a civil rights movement. You're all going to be civil rights soldiers. You're going to grow up to do well and do good. You don't want to just do well for yourself. You want to do well and then give back to your community as well. I don't want to see one person slouching in their seat like somebody owes you something. That passion has already helped funnel $1.5 billion into struggling communities. Operation Hope serves more than 300 cities and has touched the lives of at least 2 million men, women, and children. Everybody in here can grow up to be a hero and a shero and a somebody, a hero to a shero and be somebody. Everybody in here can be as successful as you want to be. Bryant's next venture, a bold plan to create 1 million new black-owned businesses in the next 10 years. Named one of LinkedIn's top voices and influencers of 2020, his message is being heard and his moves are being watched. Hold on. A former Soul Train and American Bandstand dancer, John Hope Bryant is constantly moving and consistently shaking things up. I can change the world! I'm uh, honored to be here. That that was actually a little embarrassing. <laughs> no, the, no, don't the be embarrassed. Part. <laughs> Brother, accept your flowers. Accept your flowers. We were, mm -hmm. we were so happy to give it to you. Fascinating story. Uh, raised in Compton. Uh, her homeless at the age of 18. Um, you know, everybody talks about being a product of the community. Obviously, you came out of Compton and did a great job. I I'm curious where that mindset came from to become the brilliant man that you are today. Well, whatever you see is all him and her. So him, God, mm. uh, and her, my mother. Uh, my mother told me she loved me every day of my life. Uh, she lives around the corner from us today, but she, she, um, she told me I was somebody and I believed it, you know, and uh, mm. I said, I mean, you said it, there's a difference between being broke and being poor. Being broke is economic, mm -hmm. but to be poor is a disabling frame of mind, a depressed condition of your spirit, and you must vow never, ever, ever to be poor again. And it's, it's I have a t-shirt I wear every day with a different theme, the one from yesterday was built by failure. I take no for vitamins. Success is going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. You know, you got to be resilient. And that resiliency was robbed from most African Americans um, in our experience coming here from Africa. It was robbed from us. Uh, we had a natural resiliency. We're, we're the most, one of the most resilient people on the planet. We've been doing so much with so little for so long. We can almost do anything with nothing. And maybe that's another interview for another time, but uh, my mother poured that back into me. My dad also was instructive because I'm, to give him credit, I'm a businessman because he was. I'm an entrepreneur. My dad was a businessman. His father was a farmer born in 1871 in Mississippi. So probably born into slavery and, and because, because nobody gave him the memo that we were free in 1865. My great grandfather was definitely a slave. But I, I never had the mentality or, or the thought that it was nothing I couldn't do. Um, and that that principally came from mom, uh, and I, I owe her a debt. You know, my mother's credit score now, I think it's 874. I never went, in, hey. I never knew it went that, 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 that high, oh. but that means my mother's not black. Hey. Actually, she's green. <laughs> she, I love it. She, she, she you can get your mother wants. on this show. Yeah, let's get mom love on the show. Credit scores. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So your mother's love and sense of adventure, I do want to hone in on, on the adventure because it seems to me that that has shaped you, um, maybe even seeking thrill. And not all of us have that ability to dream and to step outside of ourselves. Um, what do you make of that in the way of your success? You know, no one's ever asked me this question. I've, I've done, I'm sure, in my life, thousands of interviews. Uh, certainly, t you know, hundreds of mainstream media interviews. By the way, I don't, I think the value of this network, there's, there's multiple pieces of value, but one of them is, you know, I go in, I do three, six minute interview, whatever, we hit it, we split it, I'm gone. No one does a package like you did to unpack the story 
uh, which mm-hmm. I think is really important for African Americans to see because whatever you model, you'll be. And 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 why the kids in the inner cities want to be rap stars only, drug dealers only, mm-hmm. athletes only, because they're modeling what they mm-hmm. see as symbols of success. Mm-hmm. And what you did wasn't about me. What you did was signaling to those watching, you can do anything mm-hmm. you want to do. I think that's one of the very valuable pieces of this network and what you guys put together. So I applaud you and those who have found it and back it. Let me uh, speak to that thing you just said, though, Sharon, about my mom. My mom's not adventurous at all. <laughs> now, I've had my mother in my <laughs> race car before, and she was cool about it. <laughs> she just had her, um, I think, her 84th birthday. She'll kill me for not knowing the exact, uh, uh, either not knowing the exact year or telling her years, but 84 ish. And um, a few months ago, and uh, I've had her in a race car. I think when she was in seventy-five, no, no, eighty years old. I had her in a race car doing one hundred and thirty miles an hour at Road mm. Atlanta, and she was cool about it. She mm. did twelve laps, but she was cool when she got out and happy about it, and hasn't been in one since. My mother trusts me, but that doesn't mean she's adventurous. <laughs> Most black folks actually are not very adventurous. It's a very instructive point. I had never really thought about it to this moment. But the joke, you know, the joke is that we don't do horror movies. It's real. Like, you don't see black people in horror movies because our life is enough horror. It's enough drama. <laughs> if the Amity yeah. horror movie said, yes. we leave. We're not curious. We're not going right. up in the attic. The house is for sale. We're gone. Right. We're k- killed in the first scene because yeah. we're not convincing. I think that that has a lot to do with our experience. We've got PTSD for life. Mm-hmm. We have enough drama just trying to get from home to work and back without being pulled over and, dra- and traumatized or dramatized. Whatever the thing is of being disappointed in this world, it's baked into our spirit. And that's part of why I wrote this last book, uh, Up From Nothing, uh, The Untold Story of How We All Succeed. Not not uh, about me, but about my successes, about, about my failures and, and my resiliency. And I think that my mother pouring that self-esteem in me and me being a dreamer, mm-hmm. as Dr. Dorothy Hyde would once said, John, you're a dreamer with a shovel in your hands. That has got me thinking that I could do anything I wanted to do, that I'm not a black leader. I'm hopefully a good leader who happens to be black. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm proud of being black, but don't limit me just because you want to, don't let somebody put me in a box because they think that that's the limit of my potential. Mm-hmm. I, I believe I can go in any room and do anything, any place, at any time and perform and execute. But let's time to make smart sexy again, all of us. We've been making dumb sexy for too long. So I think I got a, a software upgrade is what I'm telling you, Sharon, that other people didn't get. A, a window opened up, then I had some early success. Started my first business when I was nine years old, homeless when I was 18, picked myself up. And I think that that brushing yourself off, picking yourself up, going, you know mm-hmm. what, that wasn't so bad. I was homeless, I'm still here. You, fe- you told me I, I, I was a failure, I'm still here. You, you told me no, yes. I'm still here, whoever, whoever you is, I'm still, still here. And after a while you go, there's nothing I can't do. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, exactly. I gotta Love tell it. you something. Um, we, I wish we could have you for hours. I, I need you to make a mm-hmm. commitment to us. So come back, if you will, and get us through good and bad times, difficult times. And number two, oh, sure. don't worry about Mike. But can I get an autograph copy of that new book, Up from Nothing? Right? I really yeah. want to read that book. She, she just hey, you know what? She can have an autograph. <laughs> She she can have audit. I want some financial advice. <laughs> want oh, to, why are you gonna give advice. me that too? <laughs> Boom. That's what I'm talking about. about. Thank you so after, much. After, God bless you. Take care. Uh, we appreciate you, John Hope, Ryan. If that yes, can't get yes. you up. I don't know what will. Right? I mean, he's everything. Start mm. your day. We'll be right back. And I get the autograph book. Ha ha, my. <laughs> <laughs>